welcome back and welcome to a slightly different video today. I'm going to be sharing with you some cool stuff, don't worry. Like we're going to go on the Alpine roller coasters in Dalat. This is cool. Oh, this is nice. Come on, baby. And I'll share some of the sights in this beautiful city up in the mountains. And I'll also take you to a fabulous desert. There are these beautiful sand dunes everywhere. And it, yeah, it feels like you're in the Sahara Desert or something. So there is lots of visually beautiful places I'll be sharing, but I'm also going to be sharing with you some of my most intimate personal issues that I struggle with. And as I look across the lat, I see a beautiful city surrounded by mountains. And yet all I can think of is like, I want to leave. Uh, you know, I like to wear my heart on my sleeve sometimes, and so I'm just going to let you all in on a couple of things, because I'm really questioning myself at the moment and second-guessing everything that I seem to be doing right now. So yeah, enjoy this one. We're going to see some cool places, and you're going to get to know me a little bit better. And uh, don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> So I'm not going to start my morning today with coffee or breakfast, but we're actually going to be going on an alpine roller coaster up here in the mountains. I thought because it opened at 7, it would get here early and avoid the crowds, but we didn't. <laughs> because this is Vietnam and everybody wakes up at silly o'clock in the morning. Here we go. <laughs> wow, okay. So you push forward to go fast and then you pull back to slow down. Not bad. Nice little S bend. This is cool. Oh, this is nice. Come on, baby. Okay, let's wait for the grannies. <laughs> I just want to go fast. Engage hyper speed. <laughs> Whoa, baby. When you want to go quick, you can go quick. The best part about this alpine coaster is this, just cruising along in the pine trees, this beautiful Dalat, crisp mountain, fresh air. It's nice and cool. And we all we get to go a little bit here. Nice. Also at the bottom of the roller coaster ride, there's this beautiful natural waterfall. And so it looks like you take your ride down here and you take a nice few photos. Can you believe it's half past seven in the morning? The problem that I'm having with Vietnam, and you might have picked up on this on this series, is everywhere I go, there's either nobody there or it's completely overcrowded. So that was a really fun way to wake up and start your morning. And what we'll do next is we'll go get some coffee, a little, we'll find a little cafe in the town and I'll show you the vibe there. Delight is touristy and it's very busy, but it's also undeniably very beautiful. And it's a nice change of scenery, you know? All of a sudden it feels like we're in Colorado, up in Estes Park, or in the Swiss Alps in the summertime. Just ignore the Vietnamese woman talking. <laughs> what do you think of this place? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I think it's cool. If I was a billionaire like Richie Rich, the movie, I'd build this in my garden, 100%. This is the best way to start your day. Maybe get the roller coaster down for breakfast. Oh, that's so cute, little kid. And his mum going at one mile an hour. <laughs> if I got stuck behind them, I would have been absolutely devastated.
Hello. <laughs> I found breakfast. I found a full English breakfast, no less, with baked beans. Absolute result. And it was delicious. And I also had a little cheeky cinnamon bun. Lovely jubbly. I've come to another touristy thing, a popular place called the Crazy House. It's basically a tourist attraction where they've built a maze, a labyrinth of staircases, interesting sculptures, trees and gardens, and it spirals around quite a few lots and it's quite interesting. The bad news is I'm surrounded by mountains, but here in Dalat, it's not anything against Dalat, I'm not really feeling myself at the minute. I feel like I'm going through a little bit of what I like to call a mid-trip crisis, even though we're actually way over halfway. We've probably only got two weeks left out of a big six-week, seven-week trip. I'm just a little bit fatigued. I'm Vietnam fatigued. Just walking here, the 10-minute walk from my hostel, what used to be charming, is now super annoying. Like for example, crossing the street back in Hanoi was a big adventure and the honking constant horning of the cars and bikes was character and it was hustle and bustle. But now, seven weeks in, it's just giving me a headache and it's just annoying me and everything is starting to annoy me. And I'm making it worse because I'm giving myself short periods of time, two days in each place, one day to get there, the next day to explore, and then the next day to leave and go somewhere else. And it's making me mentally fatigued, it's making me physically fatigued. And it's meaning that I'm coming to a place like Dalat, and I'm thinking, right, let's go on the Alpine roller coaster because that's popular. Let's come to the crazy house because that's popular. Let's do all the things that are popular. And I'm not really getting to know these places. I just turn up, I do something touristy, and then I leave. So I think it's basically, I just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing with my travel style. This rock and roll driving from one town to another is fun. And the adventures and the most happy moments are when I'm on the road. But then I also like to settle. I like to get a hotel. I like to stay somewhere for four or five days, but I just don't have the time. Vietnam doesn't allow you, you know, 30 day visas. You just don't have the time to settle. It's kind of two days and then move on, two days and move on, two days and move on, if you want to see everything that is. And I do want to try and see everything. And I could just leave Vietnam after my second visa's finished, go have another week off and come back and finish and, and take my time. And as I'm saying that, that seems like the sensible thing to do. But I'm, like I said before, I'm, I'm fatigued with Vietnam. Vietnam's amazing and I've had such an incredible time here so far. It's just this rhythm of massive crowds and then no one around and little things are starting to annoy me now that I'm kind of just rushing to get Vietnam finished with, see the south, get to the southernmost point, complete our geographical challenge. And so I'm focused more on the challenge of trying to finish than being focused on trying to enjoy myself. Like I've come to this crazy house touristy thing and I don't even know why I'm here I thought I'm here to shoot content and so I'm finding myself doing things for the videos doing things for you doing things that I think are gonna be enjoyable to watch and I don't actually think that that turns out to be enjoyable like have you subscribed to me to listen to me whinge for five minutes on top of a random building <laughs> no you've subscribed to me I think for fun videos about Vietnam Thailand and other countries coming soon but come into a place like this I mean, what is this place? And the roller coaster thing this morning, like that was fun, but it's just, just super packed. And I, as I look across the lat, I see a beautiful city surrounded by mountains. And yet all I can think of is like, I want to leave. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm not in the right headspace. Something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. I think as well, because I travel alone. I don't have anyone to f vent my frustrations with. I mean, I talk to my friends, but I, very rarely. I'm normally driving or sleeping <laughs> or making or editing videos for you. I don't really have a lot of time to share my frustrations. And then I think they bottle up and then it gets to a point like this where I just kind of just, I just 
I just kind of get over it. I just think to myself, what am I doing? I am at that point of this trip where I'm questioning what am I doing and how am I, how am I getting the best out of not only this trip, but sharing it with you? How can I maximize my experience while maximizing the video quality for you guys? And I'm just caught in that weird middle ground. And I've never done YouTube as a full-time job before. I've started this time last year, or just over a year and a half now actually, and I still really don't know what I'm doing. And I still find myself getting frustrated at times. Mostly it's amazing, obviously, but like, why, what, what am I supposed to do around here? Walk around the stairs and, you know, that's another thing. <laughs> one, more, one more thing I just want to rant about. Thank you for letting me rant. I'm sorry. Please don't write in the comments, oh, this guy just moans all the time. I don't moan all the time. I just moan sometimes. And this one's a little bit of a rant. So I went back to the hostel after breakfast for about an hour. And I started watching YouTube videos about Dalat. I was trying to think like, what, what do other YouTubers think of this place? Because to me it's loud and beepy and noisy, but also beautiful. So let's see what everyone else is saying. And everyone else is like, oh my God, the lad is our favorite place. And everyone's amazing. And everyone's having the time of their lives. And then that makes me feel worse because they're either bullshitting, trying to just be positive for views, or I'm just a miserable bastard. So, I went down to the park, I found a little spot on the grass and I just lied down. Tried to snap out of it. And, you know, I do share, maybe I share too much, but I do share what's going through my mind. Not just as a solo traveler, but as a, as a YouTuber, as a, as a person who is not only driving and traveling Vietnam completely alone, away from their friends, away from their loved ones, family, girlfriend, thousands of miles away. Of course I'm gonna feel lonely. Of, of course I'm gonna feel lost at times. And sometimes when I share what I'm going through and what I'm feeling, I open myself up to criticism and I get it. Oh Paddy, you're in Vietnam, what are you doing? Why are you always moaning? Just shut up and just stop whinging. <laughs> it's like, I, say to that, I say, have you ever traveled solo for seven weeks, maybe two months or God, I was in Thailand for a year and a bit, a year and a bit. It's hard to drive and travel solo. Yes, you meet people and you're surrounded by people, but you still have a feeling of being lost. I feel sometimes I feel very lost. And who else do I talk to? Well, there's you guys. And I know some of you are nodding your head saying, yeah, I feel like that when I'm traveling too. And you know, oh yeah, I felt like that as well, Paddy. I mean, anyone in the comment section now writing comments going, I didn't subscribe for this whingy moany bastard. I get it. But if you have traveled solo for long periods of time and you don't get lonely and lost and question yourself, then I'd like to get some advice from you <laughs> because I'd love to carry on doing YouTube and I want to share my experiences in other countries and other cultures and other areas of the planet and learn and get better at this craft of making videos and sharing what it's like to be there and also providing entertainment if possible and I'd like to grow the channel and the business and I'd like to do so many things but at the minute I just feel like it's not sustainable I'm always in a different town every day a different hotel I live out of a backpack I hardly get to see or talk to anybody and the thing that keeps me going is just the open road. I love the open road, you know. I, you know guys, you, you feel it when I'm in a good mood, when I'm traveling through the beautiful countryside and it's a beautiful day. And even if it's raining, I'm, I'm still just so caught up in the beauty of travel. But yeah, sometimes I lose my mind. <laughs> The next day, I, instead of, I should have stayed in Dalat and really just had a day off. 
um, but I just didn't feel like I had enough time. I've got to get to Saigon, I've got to get to the southernmost point, and then I've got to drive back to Saigon, I've got to try and sell the bike, and then catch a flight before my visa runs out. And so I just decided, you know what, go for a drive, take a country road down to the coast and clear your head. And that's what I did. I went on a beautiful drive down the mountains and saw some beautiful sights and even had a little dance on the side of the road. For some reason, I think because I was feeling lonely and, and homesick, I started listening to Girls Aloud like all day on repeat. The greatest hits of Girls Aloud. I mean, I'm, I'm, sh I'm ashamed to admit <laughs> that I was listening to Girls Aloud. But for some reason, it was just reminding me of home, reminding me of being with my friends, my sister, my mum, and like my family back home, and just, yeah, so, girls allowed to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm going mad. And then I got to Moine, which is a popular place. It's on the backpacker route. Um, but I didn't really want to explore it too much. I just went to the one attraction there, which is these incredible, white sand dunes. I wanted somewhere to get solitude. I wanted somewhere I could clear my head and that's what I did. And eventually, I think I snapped out of it. I do tend to get in my own way in life. I used to do it a lot more when I was younger. I used to stress myself out a lot. I used to get myself in all kinds of mischief and then people would sit me down and say, Paddy, what are you, what are you worried about? Why are you stressing? Relax, everything's fine. And sometimes you just need a nice, a nice long drive and a walk into the Sahara Desert to clear your mind. Because that's what it feels like right now. This is Moine White Sand Dunes and it is an expansive sand dune. And I've never really thought of myself as much of a desert person, but now that I'm here in the afternoon light, I do feel like Lawrence of Arabia or something. Now, don't let my drone shot and my establishing shots trick you. This is a tourist thing and there are hundreds of Vietnamese tourists on a far distant hill in their trucks and they're sliding down having fun. And there are other trucks down here further along by the lake and it's gorgeous. But I just saw this one lonely mountain and I thought this would be the perfect place to come walk, have a little bit of a quiet reflective moment and actually crack open a beer. Cheers, big ears. In the next video, I will be rested mentally, physically. I've got a five hour drive to Saigon, Ho Chi Minh, the capital. No, it's not the capital, is it? <laughs> it used to be, now it's Hanoi. And I've got friends there. I'm, I'll be able to go down the pub and watch the football. Newcastle, my beloved Newcastle are playing Nottingham Forest tomorrow. So I'll be able to watch that in the pub with some friends and feel slightly normal again. So I'll see you from Saigon. And after that, we'll push down to the Delta and push down to the very, very south. And then God knows what else we're gonna do after that. I'm sorry for whinging, I'm sorry for moaning. It's just part of this channel, unfortunately. 